It's a pleasure to have you all here today to honor the martyrs anywhere, all the martyrs, not just of Bahrain, but any martyr who has a noble cause. Oh, you are here. Sorry, I didn't see you. Oh. <laughs> nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Any martyr for any noble cause. We uh, believe that anyone who sacrifices for noble cause is a great person, regardless of who he is, regardless of uh, ethnicity, race, religion. We salute everyone who stood up to the challenges of tyranny, mm -hmm. dictatorship, uh, backwardness, <coughs> and lost his life in the process. So those people are, as many, pe as many say, are like candles who sacrifice themselves in order to light uh, the, uh, the path for the others. And of course, there are usually few. The people who give up their lives and who sacrifice to this extent are usually few. Usually, the majority do not care. But uh, there are those who are at the forefront who pay sometimes the ultimate price, which is their lives, and those who are uh, who, who, who think that life and death are equal when you do not get your uh, existence, your proper existence, your human dignity, your human values, your rights. You be, when you are enslaved, to, to live under enslavement is tantamount to death. So death and life become equal. So it doesn't matter whether you live or you die. Uh, we have this tradition of martyrdom in religions, in, in Christianity, in Islam, in, but we also have it in uh, other uh, doctrines, in other ideologies. Those who uh, are at the forefront of <coughs> workers' rights, those who are at the forefront of people's rights. When you have people who are wrongly imprisoned, who are wrongly aggrieved, uh, when you have uh, people who are in power but they exercise dictatorship, they exercise corruption, they uh, exercise oppression against others, uh, those who go and colonize other people's land, those who use up the, the people's wealth, uh, wealth. Um, all these, and there are many of them in this world, uh, of course there are people who will oppose them, and those who oppose them usually end up in paying uh, high price. We saw in recent elections here how people who stood up for uh, rights, who stood up for uh, fundamental freedoms and those who sacrificed for the sake of people, not in this country only, but everywhere else, have been here also sacrificed by the media. Uh, I think there are pe really noble people in this country. Who, re who, who defend the rights of others, who stand up for the rights of the Palestinians, of the Bahrainis, who st stand up against supplying dictators with uh, arms and with weapons. But of course, there are also traditional forces who are opposed to these values, whose main interest in life is, is to, uh, to, to uh, collect and to uh, get as much money, as much uh, status as possible. Anyway, we are always those uh, working class, those uh, freedom fighters, those who are seeking the uh, betterment of uh, the rest of the people. We are all in one, in one trench. We stand up for the right. We stand up for the freedom of the people. We stand against colonization, against oppression, against dictatorship. We salute the martyrs everywhere. This is what we are doing here today. And we have a good panel of speakers who have kindly agreed to come and join us in order to, uh, to remember the martyrs of Bahrain. Why is it called the Martyrs' Day, the 17th of December? It is just to mark the first two um, uh, people who were shot dead with live ammunition in 1994 uh, on the same day, uh, on the 17th of December. These are the first live ammunition, but there, are, there were martyrs before who were tortured under, uh, in, in, in jail or executed, but these are the people who were uh, killed in action.
<clears throat> so we, since then, for the past 25 years, we have commemorated this day. We have marked this day in the House of Lords, in the, the House of Commons. We had great people. We had people like the late Lord Avebury. We had great people like uh, Ken Livingstone. We had uh, people like Jeremy Corbyn and many people who stood up for the right of people and uh, and for the uh, end, for an end, calling for an end to tyranny and oppression. I like to thank our uh, panelists today and uh, uh, we have uh, on, on my right is uh, a, a Chris Nainam, uh, who is the vice chair of uh, Stop the War Coalition. And uh, we have seen his face before. He is not new to action and to support of uh, the oppressed. And then I have uh, next to me Father Frank Gelly, who is a priest, an Anglican priest, and who has always also supported uh, our cause and stood up for, uh, for truth. Uh, we have Dr. Jalal Fairuz on my left, who was a former MP, um, and he has been struggling since I knew him in the 70s, so 30, 40 years, he has been there at the forefront. Uh, and also, uh, we have two other, hopefully, two other witnesses. We have a recorded witness of uh, Mr. Brahim al Dimistani, who was a nurse, uh, the head of the nurse, or he was a member of the uh, nursing union, uh, or union of the nurse, well, I don't know what it's called, but uh, the union of Bahrain, uh, of nurses in Bahrain. He was uh, arrested, he was <coughs> tortured, and his son, Ibrahim, uh, sorry, uh, Ali, uh, was martyred, was killed in, uh, while he was demonstrating, protesting in the street probably in 2012 or 2013. So he will have his testimony, uh, what happened to him in jail or what, how his uh, son died uh, in action. And also probably we'll have a young man who himself is a victim of torture, uh, is a very young man. Uh, he is supposed to be here, but uh, we just called him to, to rush. He is around here uh, in this area. Uh, but he himself was a victim of torture, so we want to listen to him. Probably we have a short film also for a few minutes uh, about the whole concept. 